my life's not supposed to be like this, not because of that trauma. Among my family, this thing really affected me. But I have to move on. I try to keep myself that day. I bought sniper. I just feel like to end this, I'm tired. I ask God, I don't know why me, because I was a choir in the church. I didn't sleep around. So why is it me? Why must it happen to me? episode of Doin's Corner. Huh. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about something very heavy. It's a very sensitive topic. So I would ask that anybody watching this should please treat this conversation with empathy and understanding. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about rape and sexual abuse. And, you know, this is something that can happen to anybody. So I would advise that we don't pass any judgment to anything that has been said here today. And we just understand that, you know, the people that have been through this are dealing with some sort of trauma one way or the other. So I hope that we can extend some grace to them. The essence of today's episode is to discuss the experience and talk about how it has impacted their lives and if there's any process of getting help or getting support. Joining us today in the studio, we have a very brave young lady that is here with us today to discuss our experience with rape. Good evening. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm fine. I hope you're good. Yeah. And you're relaxed. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Please tell us your name and how old you are. My name is Elizabeth. I'm 34. 34. Okay, okay so Elizabeth, um, can you confirm that you've experienced rape? Yes, very, very. You have? Um, if you want me to, uh, how it's happened, sure. Yeah, you can just tell us how well, it's happened. Then I was in my year one in university. So I was sick. I came home for treatment. When I got home that very day, I've taken injection already. And I lied down on the balcony waiting for my brother to come back. So later, a friend of my brother just came in. He was asking me what happened to me. Why haven't I been in the school? And I told him that I was sick. I'm not feeling fine. He was not asking me. He said, ah, you're now big old. Look at how your bum bum look like, kind of a thing. I was not saying, I'm still, I'm still on my just 21. You know, said, you are now big. He talked to his mind. He told me, B, I've been having sex or something like that. So he started touching me, and I was like weak to control him, mm-hmm. not to touch me. But later, he had his way. When he had his way, he now realized I was a virgin. I've, I've not had the experience before. So when he finished doing it, he was now begging me that I should not tell my brother about it. But I don't know what to do because I was so confused. I don't really have much experience on it. So I let it go. But later he came back to beg me again. I didn't tell my brother. So later I went back to school. When I got back to school, facing my study was difficult for me because of that. I can't do anything. I cannot reach properly. I told one of my friends, but I didn't tell her I was raped. Mm-hmm. But I just realized that something happened to me. And I said, what happened? I said, I didn't understand. So Lisa was expecting to see my period that month. I was feeling so much. I said, what's going on with me? It has never happened to me before. So I went to one nurse beside my school. You know, that told me that if I had sex, I said once. You know, I said when. And I told her, I said, what did I use? I said, I didn't use anything. Okay. He said, he's going to give me injection. That maybe it can flush my system. I took the injection. Yet, I didn't see my period. First month, second month, third month, I was so scared. The only day, I cannot go home. I was so scared. that I would like to tell my brother that I'm pregnant. So later, I went back home. And I talked to my brother's wife. That's, this is what happened. But I didn't tell him that that particular person raped me. I don't know what happened. Maybe because he begged me. I didn't understand. So he now, said what, he now took me to the hospital for, to confirm if it's really true. And I said, there, they confirmed that I'm pregnant. Huh? I was so scared. I said, I want to get rid of it. She said, no, because she was looking for the foot of the womb. Mm-hmm. So she was so scared for me to get rid of the baby. And I said, okay, I would like it. He said, she's going to tell my brother and help me. So that night, my brother called me and said, do you still want to go back to school? I said, yes. Yeah. He said, okay, how come you got pregnant? My wife told me. And I said, I don't know. It was a miss. I was raped. He said, by who? I said, when I was in the campus, I don't know how it happened. So my brother and I said, I don't know how you're going to do it. Just go to school. That's what I know. So my brother wife said she will be there for me to take care of the baby that I should just be going and coming back. In this school, it was so difficult for me to study, to read. I was so shy to go to for lecture because I was the only one that got pregnant among my 
friends. So I was living at off campus in one of my friends' house just to cover my shame because in the school I was so ashamed of myself. So later, I had an early dinner, I was put to bed. So my brother wife was there for me, taking care. Whenever I'm going to school, she will carry the baby for me. So Lisa, if she now told me that I should not worry that she will claim the child as a home mm. for a while until I finish my story. So when I, whenever I'm going to school, the baby, I'll play with the baby. When I come back, the baby will be looking at me like, like her sister. Right. It's so, so because I don't, I don't know how to tell the baby that I'm the mother of the, yeah. So Lisa, I finished my education. She said, okay, I, was, I went for my service at, uh, you know, um, at Abuja, Guinness, Nigeria, PLC. So later I came back home. My brother, was say, my brother said I should carry the child, that there's nothing you can do about this again. And so I said, want to take care yes, of the child again. I was now, I couldn't, I wanted to poison myself that mm-hmm. night because I don't know where to go. I don't know where to carry the baby to at that time. So my brother was now say, okay. She would still talk to my brother about it. It was my brother that was just saying that I, you don't want the baby with him, that she just carry the baby. So my brother, why well, later talk to me, okay, I said, I will try to work. That I will take care, I will pay for the school fees of the baby. He said, if I cannot pull this father of the child, that is not going to be responsible for the taking of bringing of the baby. So later, I now started working. The only thing that keeps me going is working. Mm-hmm. I can't, that, that made me not to think. So when I get back in the night, I used to close in the night and come back to sleep because I cannot, whenever I'm alone, I'll be crying. I'll be thinking. So it was, that sister was, was there for me, that my brother's wife. So I later came to Lagos. I started working somewhere. So I got a job. So I used to send money home. My brother said I should not send money that I will take care of the baby. That same brother? That, that same brother, not yes. I don't know why he changed his mind. So Lisa, one day I was... I had a, somebody proposed to me for marriage, and I told him that, I just, I, just, I just told him before that I'm not married, that I didn't have child before, mm-hmm. because I don't know how to tell him that I have someone. So, Lisa, the thing didn't work out, Sha. I have to go back, went back home. I told my sister and my brother's wife that somebody proposed to me, but I don't know how to tell him yes. And I said, you should move on with your life, don't worry. The child started calling me auntie, because he doesn't have the mother, I'm his mom. So, Lisa, I got married with somebody at the end of the day. So the, the problem I have with him is that whenever I want to have sex with me, I always scared. So you now be telling me that what's wrong with you? Why are you always scared? You didn't, you didn't know that you had been raped before. You never told him. Earlier, I didn't tell him. So he said, what is wrong with you? Why are you always scared? So he didn't read the family. He, got, he started to be a family problem for us. He had to tell one of his sister. He said, now coming there, what is wrong with you? You are not a virgin, but why are you always scared? And I explained to her that this will happen before. So that I was raped. He said, where is the child? There is with my brother. And I said, that my son that normally call me and say that I'm the mother of the child. And I said, why? And you keep this thing for me. You cannot tell me. And I said, I'm sorry. Along the line, child, he started changing his mind towards me. I had the child for him later. Then we separate our, we went on our separate way. So since then, I've been alone oh, no. on my own. I'm so, first of all, I'm so sorry that you had to go through this. I promise you there are many, many, many young women, or even guys, young boys that have gone through this experience. And, you know, you are very strong for you to have gone through it by yourself and not even telling your brother or not telling your family members or anything. Like, I really applaud you. But I want to ask some questions. You mentioned that this happened, you were not feeling fine and you came back home. So yeah. when this was ha- happening, was there nobody at home? Did you try to struggle? Did you try to scream? Yeah. Well, I tried well. to struggle, but I was so powerless because you overpowered me. I was so strong. I and was your so parents were not living in the house at the time? I have lost my parents. It was oh. my brother, my father's house. It was my father's and uh, my brother that's in charge. So another thing that, you know, caught my attention while you were speaking is many, many people that have been raped feel the need to cover up for their rapists, right? They feel the need to just, you know, protect him. Can I know the reason why you did not tell your brother that this is the person that did this? Because he really begged me. I don't know. And apart from that, he told me that he has a fiancé. Mm-hmm. Defense was the one sponsoring him then because he's now in UK. Right. So we used to talk online, 
But he got to a stage that whenever I'm talking to him, he says his wife is complaining that he knows him as a, somebody that likes a woman. Mm. So any woman he talks to, the wife will be jealous. He may send him back to Nigeria. So I just don't want him so to... So you felt the need to protect his family over how you were feeling? You never thought at any point that maybe I should report him to the police, maybe not even your family members, maybe to the police or to anybody. You never thought about that? No. Do you regret that decision? Do you wish that you mentioned something when it happened earlier? I would have said it earlier, but I was so scared. Because scared of what? I don't know, but... Maybe for being saying that I was raped or something, I don't know. You were ashamed? I don't know how people will feel about, about me. So about you? I don't know. That would be, I was raped. It's not your fault you're raped. Like, if it happens, nobody's going to shame you for that. That's, that's on the person that did it to you. Do you understand? That's not on you. Um, I was not too there for the child. It's really pain. You were not there for the child. Yeah. But why? Because I have to move on, my brother has to be there for him. I'm so sorry. As, um, as the mother, you understand. But it was so painful. I'm sorry. Because I'm sorry. Still, I still not feel like a mother to him up to now. Because, so, as I move on, I keep on working to keep me away from that stigma up to now. <sighs> I'm so sorry. I see that you're emotional. Do you need a minute? Do you need us to go on a break yeah. for you to gather yourself? Do you need a minute? Yeah. Yeah. So we've had this heavy, heavy, heavy story. It's so, so touching. We're going to go on a quick break now and we'll be back shortly. Welcome back, guys. We're still seated in the studio with our guest, still on the topic of rape and sexual abuse. Okay. Are you good now? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. So you mentioned that you had a child from this yeah. experience. There are so many women that have explained that, you know, that got pregnant from rape and they explained that they, they hated that child. They did not feel any form of like connection with the child because of this experience. Did you feel like, did you feel that way? I, whenever I study this, I always think of the past. That's what mm -hmm. I felt. So it made me think at times. So, well, later my brother took the child, my uncle took the child for almost. Was that why you preferred to? Like leave the child with your um, yes. because of the experience yes. because of the feeling that it brings to you. Yeah. We talk on phone till now. Yeah. So it's, the child still doesn't live with you. No. How old is this baby now? Thirteen. Thirteen. So this experience happened roughly about fourteen years ago. Yes. And it's so painful that even after fourteen years, that's a decade and four years, you are still feeling this pain. I think. This just shows that this is an experience that even years after is not easy to shake up. I'm so sorry. I just have to move on, just comfort myself at times. So by walking, all my time is work. I don't want to think. You said you still talk to this person that yes. you did. Did you express to this person how you're feeling? Did you, did you express that, oh, this is hurting me? Does he even know that there's a I child involved? Say. You didn't, I didn't tell me about the child at all. So till now he doesn't know. Yes. But it's long we've been talking now because of his wife. He always complain about his wife. But he's still on my Facebook. And I cannot tell my brother, which is his friend. I just move on. You mentioned while we were off camera that you also had a very similar experience, but this time it wasn't successful. Yes. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. Um, I went to, there was a guy that normally gave me cases to wash in the school. So he came to me one day with a guy. But the guy looked like all those niggas. So he now started to follow him to their, to their house to collect the film. It's a stadium complex around our school. So when I got there, I got inside where we were playing. I was looking at the hard bomb. So when I saw the guy, and I said, oh, this guy looked like a nigga. They were now laughing. I don't know they have another intention 
normal, just on my normal me. Right. Yeah, I won't come out. So later, I know I want to go and give me the, the film outside at the other her place. So it was less with me and that nigga in the house. So, and I noticed that he put some blue film. Blue film? Yes, porn. adult film, yeah. And mm. I said, ah, I don't like this film. Why do you put this film? I don't like it. Can you change it? And I said, what? And I stood up. I swear I know what he wanted to do. Before he locked the door. You know, and I said, I'm going. I don't want the film again. And I said, I, sit down, come to bed. I want to fuck you. That's the statement this mentioned. I said, please, I'm begging you. Please, I was begging. I was so scared. Because in the room is only bed and a chair on the table. And I stood up. And I, I kneeled down. I was begging him. You know, saying, yeah, see, no girl has escaped me in this place. That any guy, that guy was my trainee. He's my trainee. Whenever I need, he provided for me. Mm. And I said, I'm sorry. Please, I use the name of God to beg you. Say, forget it. He said, I have money. I have girlfriends. And I was telling him that, please, I have not done it before. I have a boyfriend. And he knows. That won't make him hungry. He said, see, I have to have you. With what you just told me. I said, please. Maybe because I mentioned his, his sister or, or his younger sister. He now changed his mind. He said, on one condition, if I can be his girlfriend. I said, yes, I'll be your girlfriend. He now said, come and sit on the bed. I said, I'm scared. Please don't rape me. He now said, don't worry. I'm not going to touch you. So after that, he spoke to me that we'll be, I'll be his girlfriend. Whenever he needs me, he'll come to my house, kind of a thing. So he was now seeing me home. To my surprise, I saw the guy outside. Hmm. The, the other, other guy. guy was outside. So it was like a plan between I them. I was so surprised. What's going on? So the guy too was shocked seeing the guy seeing me off. He mm -hmm. now look at as in he want maybe he want me to cry outside or something. The guy now see me off to my house. The following day, I moved everything I have to the hostel. That's how I had anything about him. Mm -hmm. That time, so that's how I escaped that one. And this happened after the the first one. Yes. The other one happened first, right? Yes. Yes. <sighs> Can you? Tell us how this experience has affected you in your life generally, maybe your relationships with people or maybe, however, emotionally, psychologically, how has this affected you? In the aspect of sexual stuff, I don't like sex. In general? In general. So I'm always, whenever, I'm always scared of it. I don't know. Mm. That aspect, I always, it always put me off. I, I mean, that's, that's very then, under, okay. Then being alone, maybe I went somewhere, somebody was there with me, maybe a man, mm -hmm. and he's not my relation or relative. I would be scared to stay with him. I'm just saying, yes, I'll say I want to stay outside. I don't know. That trauma is still on my brain. I don't know. Maybe because I didn't share it with anybody, I don't understand. So I'm always feeling it. Up to now, I'm staying alone now because I've left the previous one. Do you feel like this experience affected your marriage? Because you said that you got married at some point. Yes. Do you feel, how, how, how would you say it affected your marriage? Because then my ex always complain that whenever I want to make love with me, I always like, as if I am scared for him to touch me. Mm -hmm. So, and at times, I would love to be alone at times. If he's with me inside talking to me, I'll, I'll be doing another thing. You say, what is wrong with you? So I think maybe that is what makes him to... Get tired. Yes, I don't know. So I think it's really affected me. I always want to be alone, not to be on that man. That's I, what I feel. Just to stay on my own. You mentioned that eventually he decided, he, he changed towards you, right? Your, ma yes, your husband. Yes, yes. Do you regret telling him this experience? Do you wish that you never told him about it? I didn't regret it. You don't regret telling him? Yeah. Because being married to himself, I don't really want to be on that man. I don't know. Mm. But I don't know. I just want to be me alone. I understand. So that is what I feel. Do you have other kids from this? I have one. You have another she child? Will. Is this child, is she aware of the, uh no. older brother? She doesn't know about him? She's too young. Do you intend to tell this man about this child at any point or never ever? You will never? I don't want to tell him. Never? For the rest of your life? Yes. And in terms of providing for this child, 
How has that been? Because if he's not aware that he's the father, I assume that you're taking up the complete responsibility for the child. How has that been for you? It's my uncle. Your uncle? That's been there for me now. So they're the ones taking care of, like, financially? Yeah. Yes, yes. Everything? In school and everything. So I move on. When this event happened, why didn't you talk to somebody? Maybe, even if it wasn't a family member, did you, did you ever talk to... Because a lot of people, especially in this part of the world, don't really know about counselling or therapy or all of that. So most people go to, like, their pastors in church or whatever. Did you ever discuss this with anybody? No. You didn't? Why? I, didn't. I was scared. I felt ashamed. Ashamed. Yeah, I don't know. I was so scared. that telling people I'm brave. I don't know how I feel. I don't want family issues. I suppose you'll have said it earlier. If I'm saying it now, it will be too late. Right. So I just have to I have to decide to move on with it. Though I'm always thinking about it at times. But I move on by walking kind of a thing. I put it away from my mind. But whenever he called me, I mean, no When speech. you say he, that man, the that person that did it. Oh, your child. I may not be able to sleep throughout that day. I will be thinking. Does he know now that you're his mommy? Or he still thinks you're his he auntie? He knows. He knows now. How did you break that news to him? My brother's wife told him. Told him. So, he felt bad, right? Well, he seen me as an, his auntie earlier, so... He still called me auntie, so... Do you regret keeping that information from him? From him? Do you wish you told him from the beginning... I don't wish from the beginning because I will not move on. So, does he know how his birth came? Does he know that this was as a result of rape? Is he aware of that? I told him that if I don't run away, oh. I didn't see him. So. I'm so sorry. No I problem. can I can see that this pain is still very fresh in your mind. Are you are you interested in getting any form of like counseling help? Do you think that that's something that you need, or would you rather just keep coping the way you've been coping? If somebody was willing to maybe get you a therapist or get you a counselor to just help you talk through this experience, would you be open to it? Yeah, move on. You rather just move on. Do you still feel shame? I need you to... There's nothing to be ashamed about. This is not... You are not the problem. You didn't do anything wrong. This could I have know. happened to me. It could have happened to anybody. Do you if get... I talk now, oh, my brother will say, why don't you say it earlier? So that's the problem. And what if your brother doesn't say that? What if he understands that maybe you were going through a lot of pain and that's why you couldn't say it? You cannot not get help because you are worried about everybody. What I'm getting so much from your story is you're so worried about every other person. You need to put yourself first at some point, right? And consider yourself. What if you're thinking your brother will say, why didn't you say this thing? And what if he doesn't respond that way? What if your brother says, I'm sorry that you didn't, you know, you didn't say this. I'm sorry you had to deal with this. Don't you think that maybe, you know, getting help will help you feel better? You don't think so? I mean, I can't force that on you. That's completely your decision if you want to. I'm just asking. Um, I don't want to be a, a family stuff. So I'm moving. Family stuff? I'll cope. You'll cope. What's your fear right now? Are you, are you afraid of... I know that you say you're scared of destroying that, the person's family, the person that raped you, but which family stuff? Are you scared that to destroy your own family too, like your relationship with your brother... Are you scared? Yes. And it may reach the guy that impregnated me then. So I don't I just want to move on because the thing I've died down. I've lied to them that the person that raped me, I don't even know him. Mm. So should I say it now? It might cause another problem for me. So if I started talking now again, I will not be okay. So let me just put it away from me and move on. They've affected my marrying life, but I've decided to move on like that. Do you think you would ever consider remarrying if you were to meet a nice man that just hears your story, does not judge you, still loves you, still wants to be with you? Do you think that you, you consider if you can, that? If you can understand me, I don't know. 
I can see. If he understand me very well, I can see cook. It's not easy, though. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. And you're you're so strong. You're so brave. I don't even think you're giving yourself enough credit. You're such a strong person because there's so many people that have been through this and they've killed themselves in the process. Like it's a lot to deal with. There was a night like that. I want. I try to keep myself that day. I bought sniper. Can you please speak up? Didn't hear. I bought a sniper that night. Was I was communicating with a friend, mm. so I want to know that I'm tired. I just want to give up with everything. You know, say I don't like you even staying alone with the way you are talking. Mm. I said, see, for the record, I just want to end it. And I put that sniper. <laughs> Do you know this girl rushed to my house, called somebody in my house to come and knock my door mm. that night. I don't know she can go to that extent and because you already taken it at that point. I wanted to take wanted it. To take it. I've, I've removed the cover already. The man was now knocking. I said, what, what do you want? I don't know my friend have contacted him. So it was the one that told me that, what was going on? Your friend told me something. I said, nothing. You, you now stay with me. He said, there's something going on. And I said, nothing. I just feel like to end it. I'm tired. Because at the time when I think that I'm, my life is not supposed to be like this, not because of that trauma. She understand. I'm on my family. The thing really affected me. But I have to move on. I have to move on. So I'm so sorry. Even my younger boy sister was telling me one day that don't you think you need to go and see pastor? That you don't, she don't know what's wrong with me. I said, nothing is wrong with me. He said, why don't you want to marry again? I said, I'm okay. I want to live alone. I don't want to be under man. But she refused to understand me. Because I can't tell her. I understand how you feel completely. I'm not a counselor, but what I would say is this, right? It's a very, I think it's a very normal feeling to not even want to be associated with men in general. Or not even, I think it's as a result of the trauma but I don't want you to deny yourself of the beautiful things you can get out of life. This trauma does not define your life. You can get married, you can find a man that loves you, that will take care of you, that will understand you, that will help you through this journey to you. You've gotten to a point where you know, you've even almost forgotten about it. Do you understand? And you can, you also have, you can build a relationship with your child, a beautiful relationship. Let him and you know his younger sister, you know, have a relationship together. I just don't want you to deny yourself of the beautiful things you can have out of life because of this experience that's happened to you. Remember that the person that did this to you is married to yes. somebody. Yes. Probably going to build his own family, probably going to have his own kids, and you know, they will go on picnics, go on dates, enjoy, laugh. You know, there is what happens to us in life and there is how we allow that affect us. Do you understand? If you allow your trauma to affect you in a way that you end up living a miserable life, killing yourself, it's not just life that has done something to you. You've also done something to yourself at that point because you deserve a beautiful life. Do you understand? And there's absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. Absolutely nothing. I'm telling you, you were just... It's just an unfortunate experience that happened to you. The person that should be ashamed is the person that did this to you. And I promise you, if you're worried about the shame, if you're worried about the stigma, nobody shames rape survivors. Nobody shames them. Because everybody understands. I promise you, if I could have been in the wrong place at the wrong time, and that could have happened to me too. So I don't want you to think that there's something about you or anything about you that made this specifically happen to you. It's not you. This could have happened to anybody. When this experience happened, did, you, did it affect your relationship with God? Did you feel like, why did God make this happen to me? Because I know I've heard stories of people that felt like God does not love me. Why did he allow this happen to me? Did you feel that way at any point? Yes. I said, why me? I was a virgin. I didn't sleep around. So why is it me? Why must it happen to me? Because my dad really loved me so much. So it's, I it should have not been me. I don't know. It's, I really, really do that. I asked God, I don't know why me. Because I was a choir in the church there. So 
Kan imagine. Mm-hmm. Okay, I just have to move on. I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry. But I hope you still believe in God. You still believe that God loves you. Yes, I don't used to go to church like that. Again. You don't go to church like that. Again. You don't need to go to church. If you have a good relationship with God, you just need to have a personal yeah, relationship with God. That's all. I used to pray. I just don't want you to think that God does not love you. You didn't do anything wrong. Like you said, you were not sleeping around. You were not a bad girl. You were not a nothing. Can you imagine? You didn't do anything wrong. And you still have so many years ahead of you. Like, you don't even know. You have so many years ahead of you to live a beautiful life. I promise you. Well, we're going to go on a quick break because this is a bit heavy. And then... We'll be back shortly. Welcome back on <laughs> welcome back. We're still on the topic of rape and sexual abuse. Just to wrap this up, if you could give an advice to anybody out there that either has experienced this or is experiencing this right now, what would you say to them? Well, I would tell the person to go for advi- advice or counseling or maybe talk to somebody close because it's not easy. You can kill it as well. It's not easy because if, he didn't, if she didn't tell anybody, she can poison herself because in the night thinking of what she passed through, it's not easy. It's not easy. She, you understand? Yeah. It's not easy. <sighs> so we've come to the end of this episode. And what I would say is if you're watching me right now and you're either going through this or you've been through this, please talk to somebody. And I need you to know that, you know, there's no reason to be ashamed. You've not done anything wrong. There's nothing wrong with you. There's no reason why God allowed this happen to you. Bad things happen and... At the end of the day, all that matters is how you allow that to affect you. Please speak to somebody. Please get help. If you're not comfortable talking to a family member or a friend, there's so many counselors online, you know, that you can talk to. You can talk to your pastor if you trust your pastor. You can talk to your friend, anybody. Just get help and understand that this does not define you. And you can still live a beautiful life. You can achieve so many things, even with this experience. And I wish you all the best. And I'm sending you all the love and all the comfort that you need. God bless you. Goodbye.